it's just mm -hmm. it's just such life you know and it just never ends you know we have this bible with all of these words and and it's infinite it just never ends this truly is the food that that keeps us going now when you're a young christian it's really hard to understand when you're a young christian and your life is really 99.99% .99 carnal it's really hard to understand how dark, how words could be what appeared to be words could be spiritual food because of course it's the spirit behind the words but I don't see how you could explain that to anybody but once Christ is, is alive in you this kind of, I, I appreciate your question uh, this, this ability to answer the ability to, to answer your question your question brought forth creativity in me because I didn't know the answer before you asked me the question so creativity stirred up in me and just gave me a real high I, I just I just absolutely love it you know any and any spiritual teacher even in any discipline if they're a legitimate teacher will tell you that you learn from your students but this is how you learn from your students you, if you say that to, to a young student with pride they, they could get all go all off saying well my teacher learns from me no I learn from you by the challenges that you present me with, by the questions that you ask me. And I also learn from you by your errors and by your mistakes and by your mistreatment of me. I have to learn how to deal with you in a godly manner. So that's how I learn. That's how we teachers learn from our students, either from good questions or from your errors. We learn, we learn from having a relationship with you, okay, on every level on your positives and your negatives be, being the ones that that are that are um, the word that comes to me is superior but I'm not talking I'm not using that word superior on any on, on the level of personality there is a superior mind in the mind that is the Christ mind and there is a superior knowledge and a superior wisdom so when when you the student uh, interacts with the teacher in a manner that stirs up that superior wisdom that's how we learn from you and that's how we grow and it's a tremendous challenge I love your questions so, so. and uh, what's interesting is that's what was said about Donald Trump one of the things that was said about him that he answered every question that they asked him it, it he wasn't afraid, not, like Hillary, she hasn't had a press conference in a year, she's afraid, she's afraid of the questions, because she's not honest, see, and when you challenge her, creativity doesn't come forth, only phoniness comes forth, see, you know, I used to have an issue with some of the people in this ministry a long time ago, and where, where I would tell them, I would honestly tell them, look, when I say things to you, I don't get an honest answer from you, it's like you go into your database and you pick a, an answer and that's what you give me. And, and that's the end of the conversation because, because the life, rather, we have the ability to give life to each other. A conversation like this that just happened between Sandra and I, I would that I would have this with all of you. It's a living conversation, if you understand what I'm saying. When you don't give me an honest answer or ask an honest question and you just pick an answer out of a, a deck of cards that's in your head, then I can't come back I can't come back to you and have a living interaction with you. See? So people that can't communicate on, on an honest level, you're be, you're denied this this opportunity for spiritual growth. But this is what's waiting for us, brethren. You know. It's like a fire lights lights a fire. You know, we, we just we set each other on fire when this operates in us, and it's literally Christ Christ in us communicating with each other in a godly level. God, the Lord will set it up if you're when you attain to this state where Christ and you can function in this kind of relationship, and your personality is not blocking it. It's a combination of your personality or your pride blocking it. Okay. Otherwise, I don't know why you wouldn't be having conversations like this with me if there wasn't some blockage as long as I know Christ is in you and Christ is in everyone that I talk to in the ministry. So why don't we all have conversations like this? It, it, it just, it, life just came forth. A new, something new came forth. A, a, a 
thought forms just came forth, new revelation came forth as a result of a question and answer. But you have to have this kind of openness and, and honesty. You know? And the Lord has to put the question in your heart, you see. So why aren't the questions in your heart? I know you have to ask the Lord. Is it your pride stopping it? I, I don't know. I don't know. But if I, were, if I were you, if I was not sitting in this chair, and I was sitting in another chair in this meeting, I would be asking God for this, this kind of ability to ask living questions that call for living answers that are the fruit. But the, Sandra and I just had an act of union. I mean, I don't mean to sound gross, but the term the Lord gave me to express it is a spiritual sexual union. Christ in her just communicated with Christ in me on a creative level and something new was born. Very exciting what just happened. I don't remember that ever happening to me all the years that I'm teaching. Yeah. So, this is what God wants for all of us. This is true life. And it's all through minds and understanding. And it's just like, you know, you can't go to college until you learn how to read and write. You have to have some basic foundation before you enter into this exciting aspect of life. So that's why you've been in church your whole life, all the years that you've been in church, is getting you ready for what you just experienced here, if you can even understand what happened. Something new was born. It was very exciting. Mm -hmm. and, and it's what the Lord desires, from, from not only with me, with each other. That, that's your future. If you can't do it now, that's your future, that you should be able to do it with each other. You should be able to converse out of Christ Jesus in yourself and have a conversation that produces new life. What is new life? Solutions to problems. Answers to questions. Solutions to problems. Not coming from your carnal mind, but coming out of Christ. It activates him. It activates his energy. And then it flows through all of you and it flows, overflows and goes outside of you. And it's going to, at some point, it's going to start touching other people at some point. But I'm happy with it here. I'm happy with what God is doing here. There's enough for us to do here without out there being out there looking for people to minister to. If God puts you with other people, well, that's a different story. But the whole church is out there looking to minister outside of themselves. That, brethren, that's not where it is. That's like in the Lord just told me. That's like in to 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 a Christian saying, "Is Jesus here or is Jesus there?" And the Lord said, "Don't look out there. He's coming from the east to the west. It's going to be as obvious to you as as the lightning." in the sky because he's inside of you. So the whole church is out there looking for spiritual satisfaction outside of themselves by doing something or teaching somebody and that's not where it is. You need to be prepared to give the answers. That's where true life is when you have the answer. So if you don't have the answer now, if I were you, I would ask the Lord, how come I don't have the answer now and what must I do to have a Christ Jesus in me in that state? And would you allow me to ascend to that, that place? Because that's where the life is. Okay, I just see it in the spirit, fire, fire rising up, and fire rising up and touching each other. And I never had this experience before. So we're growing here every day, new experiences every day. I never ever said that to anybody before. I had that experience before, I'm very excited. And that's when the whole ministry is going to ignite, when we're all doing this amongst each other. And we will abide in a continual flame. We will abide in the lake of fire and not be burned. We will be like Daniel in the fire with Jesus. We, we will be in the lake of fire and not burned. But it's a different usage than what House Andrew was using. It's the eternal fire that purifies us, that continuously purifies us. There used to be a song, the blood, the blood that, uh, not the word, that cleanses us from day to day, it will never lose its power. That's what it's talking about, spiritual blood that's in the form of spiritual fire that cleanses us continuously, that stops us from sinning. And what would be a sin? What would have been a sin? If she asked me that question and I answered it out of my corner one, that would have been a sin. I would have missed the mark. Now sin, the definition of sin is that you miss the mark. So. 
if I if I wanted to put up a front because I didn't initially I really didn't know the answer. I really had to think about I really had to think about what she was saying. See, we're going to say now there are a lot of teachers and a lot of people they wouldn't want to do that. They would want the answer, and if they the answer, if they didn't know the answer from a previous experience, they would have said they would have pulled that card out of their computer and said whatever they wanted to say, and they would have lost that opportunity for creativity. That's the true creativity. Whatever Christ Jesus is doing in you, however he's developing your talents with you, it would be music. You know, with you, you could actually, you, I don't know whether you know it or not, but you've experienced that a lot, with the wisdom he's given you for the, what you do in the ministry. It gives you a lot of wisdom. So your, your creativity is very intellectual, similar to mine, which makes sense. You're my sister, right? So he's... He's, he is our creativity if we will just shut up and get out of his way. If we will just shut up and get out of his way, he is our creativity, he is our genius, he is our wisdom and knowledge, and he, he is everything that we need if we will just get out of his way. And it's amazing what he will do if we will just get out of his way and admit that we don't know how to do it. You know, when I wound up in the hospital Saturday night, I, I should have never gone. I don't know what got into me that I did that. I'm hoping that it was God, you know, because if it wasn't God, I have to repent. But it might have been God because when I got there, I met a, an emergency room doctor that, in my opinion, was incompetent. And I've been asking the Lord ever since, I mean, what is, is there anything I'm supposed to do about it or was he just exposed in the spirit, you know? And uh, he can... And the thought has come to me that he didn't, well, he did misdiagnose me, but he knew exactly what he was doing, that he couldn't, this is what's in my mind, that he couldn't bring himself to say that he didn't know what to do. Because I, I said to him, I think I had food poisoning, either I had food poisoning or a virus, and I had pretty severe abdominal pains. And I even said to him that I had called the emergency room, and the nurse told me that, I had it in my head that if you have food poisoning, they pump your stomach. Maybe that's from years ago. I don't know where I got that from. But that what was in my head, that if you have food poisoning, they pump your stomach. And when the pain didn't go away, I, I should have never gone. You know, So it had to be some kind of a test. Since I ran into this doctor that didn't do the right thing, that, that had to be behind it. But I don't really know what it meant. So I said to him, I had called the hospital, I called the emergency room, and the nurse said, there's really nothing they could do for you if it's food poisoning. Whether it's food poisoning or a virus, there's really nothing much they can do for you. But if you feel uncomfortable, you should come in. And then eight hours later, when the pain was still pretty severe, I decided to go in. But in, in retrospect, I should have never done it. Yet I did it. And it was just very strange. Even Brooke wanted to drive me in, and I said, no, call it an ambulance. And I... I don't know what came over me. The Lord hasn't spoke to me about it yet, other than to tell me this, that the doctor either didn't know what to do or wasn't willing uh, to say, well, yes, then... Actually, he did acknowledge that. If it's, if it's food poisoning, there's nothing we can do. And then he went on and made it something that it wasn't. And then a terrible thought came to me. I really hope that it's not true. Because I can't get it out of my mind because I shouldn't have done that. And it, my going there was a fiasco. You know, I should not have been there. I should not have gone. I should have just stayed with the pain and, until it passed. And I told you it passed. Like as soon as, as, soon as the, I got into the ambulance, it, it passed, you know, after all of those hours of severe pain. And I had this terrible thought that uh, he took all of these tests that must have cost a fortune, must have cost hundreds of dollars. I, I mean, I have insurance, so I just had a $75 copay. But I, I went in with a dumb and he took an electrocardiogram. What did he take an electrocardiogram for? He took an electrocardiogram, he, he took blood, blood tests about my testing my pancreas and my this and my that. And, and he wanted to take an x-ray, I, I refused the x-ray. Yeah. What was that all about? Was he incompetent? Or what, was he, did he panic that he didn't know what to do? Or was he part of a scam in the hospital, taking te tests that, uh, that the government would pay for? I still don't know, but something was really wrong with me 
going there. <laughs> so something was really wrong with that doctor. Something was just really wrong with what he did. So was it him personally? I I don't want to think that this uh, the hospital was in or something. I, I don't I don't know. I don't know what to say. I know that there's terrible Medicare fraud. And Donald Trump talks about it, this severe Medicare for it. I don't want to, I'm not saying it's true, but it could be true. That, you know, well, the thought that just popped into my mind now, which might be a witness to that, oh my God, was that I'm, I have every reason to believe from what I've heard from many, many people, that our police officers in New York anyway, that they're given a quota. Actually, my, someone who was a retired police officer told me that it's true. They have to write a certain number of tickets. They have to write a certain number of tickets. And that the police used to have discretion, that if they stopped you and, uh, and they saw that you were really, you know, like I got caught once, I was speeding, and I really felt bad. I mean, I, I know what I was, I didn't, it, it, was, it was an honest reaction, but it was something like this. I really, I didn't stop to think about it, but I really did humble myself. and I just said, yes, officer, and I was just sitting there, and I was so upset that I was going to get a ticket that he said, oh, okay, go on. But from what I'm told, they can't do that anymore, that they're supposed to give you the, no more discretion, I have to give you the ticket. No. So maybe as an emergency room doctor, he's under some obligation to take some, some tech. What did he take an electrocardiogram for? Maybe there's some kind of a scam going on here. I don't know. I don't know. But I know that most most of the time what I do is under the anointing. And the Lord hasn't chastised me yet or anything. I just know that in general I should not have done it, but I did it. So why did I do it? What made me do it? And if I, if I didn't run into a problem when I got there, I would say, well, I just messed up this time. But I ran into a problem when I got there. What was exposed? What was exposed with this doctor? Why would he completely ignore me? When I, tell, I told him, you know, I told him my stomach was gurgling and then this extremely painful pain would come in. It seemed to me it was gas, a gurgle and then pain. It's, it was gas. I thought, anyway, completely ignored me and made it into something else and took all of these tests. So, that, Brendan, that's our, our job. You need to understand that that's our job, that the Lord is using us to reveal sin. And then he deals with it however he deals with it. Sometimes he has us to say something, but I had no authority in the hospital. To be, to be honest with you, with the revelation that I have of the evil in high places, in spiritual high places, I was concerned he wouldn't release me. I, I asked the nurse to tell him that I was feeling better and I just wanted to go home. But he, he did release me. I actually had a concern that he wouldn't release me. I actually prayed. Please, Lord, don't stop him from releasing me because something was wrong. Brethren, you, you have to be able to find the balance. If you need a doctor, you go to the doctor, but you better have God in your, on your left hand side when you go. Doctors do things. It was, it was right here on Long Island, wasn't it? Maybe five or ten years ago. There was a doctor that told this young man that he had cancer. You know, you know that? And told him that he had to go immediately immediately for this radical cancer treatment. And the guy was, I don't know what he went to the doctor for, but he was fine. And it turned out that the doctor had some kind of a grant and that if he didn't have uh, to do research on this cancer and if he didn't produce a patient with that cancer, he was going to lose the grant and the guy was a healthy guy. But the things happen. You have to use your brains. You don't do everything the doctor tells you to do. You need to have as much information as you can get. You need to have people around you that, that can help you with information, that can help you make the decision. And you have to have God in the midst of this whole thing. 
brethren, we're in hell. There's evil everywhere. And when you're a son of God, there's ten times as much evil waiting to get you. I, I'm not so smart. I, I've been abused by doctors my whole life, so uh, I know it's true. I've had doctors that wanted to... I had a doctor that wanted to cut my breast off, and there was nothing wrong with my breast. So I've had some bad experiences. All that I'm telling you is that they're possible. You cannot idolize doctors. They're just people, and you don't know what they're into. Maybe this doctor was into witchcraft in his personal life. It's totally acceptable today to be into witchcraft. No, one, no one's going to lose their job to be in, in witchcraft today. So what if you get a doctor that's into witchcraft and that spirit moves through him and he wants to destroy you? You cannot treat doctors like they're gods. I thank God for them, okay? But they're not gods. They have to be a tool of my God for them to help me. If you're a doctor, you have to be a tool of my God. He has to be using you to help me. The doctor is not God. The hospital is not God. The medical system is not God. You are a tool that my God can use to help me or not use to help me, as he sees fit. I'm telling you the truth. So, brethren, yes? Previously, Rita had a question, but um, your discussion with Sandra answered part of it, so I'm not sure if she still has more, but she said she'll talk on the phone. Oh, okay, Rita. What's your question? Yeah, I was writing in uh, the, at the same time you were answering mm -hmm. the so you may have answered some of it. I'll have to re-listen to it. It was along the lines with the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you want me to read it or not. Yeah, sure, let's hear it. Well, I I had the right answer. Actually, Margaret did too. We, we both said in lake of fire. But um, I was saying except for the letter of the word people, which we deal with a lot, um, you know, we'll think of them in the future and relate it to hell. They do relate to hell because they don't know the difference. Yes. And um, I know a lot of them do. I don't know if they read that scripture that says, you know, and death and hell will be cast into the lake of fire, but it evidently doesn't click. I mean, it hasn't clicked with a lot of people and didn't click with me. I, you know, that's just, it's just not taught. And I was thinking, you know, what, what could I give them as a short answer? Because I have said that too. I've, I've tried to, and I, I have even said, well, it's actually... Christ. It's actually, you know, to help them understand that, that the lake of fire is the fire of God. It is a, ultimately a good thing. Mm -hmm. But I was just thinking, what could I say sh as a short answer to help them? Because they're taught so negatively and they to fear it so much, to fear mm -hmm. hell and the lake of fire so much, that it's hard for them to hear what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So that, that was what I was saying. And, what would be a good short answer? Because you said to say, well, Satan and the devil are going to be cast into the lake of fire. And that's a good answer. But if they, they're going to think, oh, you mean that last day when everything's over and the rapture's happened and, mm -hmm. and Christ comes back to the earth or something like that, you know? Yeah. Well, that's a good question. At the moment, I don't have the answer. It's just really hard. To minister to people in that state, I would like the answer. What will you give us an answer? What do you say to people like that? <laughs> yeah, so I, I actually have said that to them. And I think somehow it has touched them in the spirit because they just look at me and I don't, I don't see the fear sometimes. I don't see them flipping out about it. So maybe the Lord just touches them. You know, yeah. through just that little nugget or something. Yeah, maybe maybe you could use that opportunity to introduce them to the idea of of a, a corrective judgment that comes from Christ. You know, that is for our benefit. 
something like, well, yes, hell, hell and death are being cast into the lake of fire. They won't be able to hurt us anymore. Uh, now only Christ can be the one to correct us. You know, something like that, you know, without any big, long explanation, just one little sentence that would get inside of their head, you know. And yeah. just, just plant that idea of, well, now only Christ can correct us, because, you know, Christ, if he doesn't correct us, we're bastards, you know, and then just drop it. That's really the best that you can do. But people that aren't actually yeah. asking you the question, want, wanting to learn from you, that's really the best that you can do is drop these little nuggets and hope that they take root. Yeah. I have, I have dropped the nugget about the difference between the sign and reading and the judgment seat of Christ. Yeah. And some have been able to receive that. Because mm -hmm. they, 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 they've never heard that before. Except that they, they think that the white don't judge and it's after you die too. Yes, yes. So I have to, I have to tell them that it's, it's here and it's, it's now. And they, they're listening. Well, that's yeah, good. They're listening. That's good. He's... These, these Bible principles are going on in our, if Christ Jesus is active in you, we're living the, I live the Bible every day. If you could just have eyes to see it, you're living the Bible every day. It's so exciting. To me, it's just so exciting to see principles in the Bible manifesting in my life every day, you know. So, uh, I just pray that everybody should be as blessed as I am. It's, it's just a wonderful lifestyle. Now, I'm just working, what I'm working on right now is not getting aggravated when things go wrong because as soon as I get aggravated that shuts down Christ Jesus and it can't function. So I'm rebuking myself every time I start to get aggravated. I just rebuke myself. It's like I'm another person. Well David spoke, speaks to his own soul in one of the Psalms. He speaks to his soul. I speak to my soul and I say, well stop it. Stop it right now because if you get aggravated Christ Jesus cannot give you the answer.